Hi, I'm back again after a little break. Um, I'm just at a supercharger waiting and I'm just on my way home from a event from Lucid. Um, they are um, coming out with an electric vehicle, unfortunately two years from now, and their first car is called Air, so the Lucid Air. And I was just at a presentation at here in Orange County. Um, it was just a select group of people. I don't know how I got invited, I just got lucky. And um, they showed the car and it was actually a very um, hands-on uh, presentation because they had an actual uh, production car there. Well, I shouldn't say production car because it's coming out in two years, but it looked as finished as a, as a real car. Uh, we could just sit in it and, um, you know, look at everything, all the seats, everything, all the functions seemed to work, even the touchscreen worked. Um, and then we got to test drive it, uh, unfortunately not ourselves, but um, a driver was driving us around. Those were uh, test vehicles, they had no internal paneling, it was just basically um, a prototype but it had all the uh, main, had all the main, uh, you know, components. Obviously, battery and motor and all of that from the car as, as it is coming out, and, and that was actually interesting. So, um, I want to show you the footage. It's pretty raw because I was trying to get it as the event was going, and I didn't um, record the entire uh, presentation because. Um, there's actually YouTube videos already out from um, a live presentation that they did, so you can watch that. They explain a little bit the philosophy and how the car was um, designed and the idea behind it and all of that. Um, I just want to show you with my footage that I got there um, what the car looks like, what it feels like to be in there and all of that. So um, here it is. The event itself was hosted at Peter Rawlinson's um, private home in, in Orange County. He's the CTO of Lucid. Um, it's a gorgeous place, uh, really amazing, as you can see here. So one of the ways we're doing that is um, we look at our car as really a new class of vehicle. As uh, Zach mentioned, the industry has a very um, steady evolutionary way in which they create categories of the vehicles. Um, and we've set out to really disrupt that with our very first product. If you think about it, this is a little bit difficult to see, um, on the left here you see uh, an E-Class Mercedes, so think of that as the mid-size uh, vehicle, Audi A6, 5 Series. This is kind of the bulk of sport luxury uh, in the U.S. as well as the world. Um, our vehicle is roughly that size from the outside. Um, that size is important because it's easy to move around, it's good in the city, uh, you can fit it in your garage, you can get in the parking space at the mall. So it, we consider that the ideal size. Uh, but at the same time, um, our vehicle uh, is very sleek and sporty and ultra high performance like a coupe on the right. Think of an Audi A7 or a CLS Mercedes or a 6 Series BMW. Very exciting, very emotional, very sleek, very high performance. But on the inside of the car, we have the space that's the equivalent of a full-size S-Class Mercedes or even Maybach. So we've combined these attributes from three different um, categories of vehicle into a single vehicle. And that's only possible through the advanced electri electrification of our product. So I don't want to bore you with the entire presentation. It's out on YouTube already. You can watch that. I think they have a, their own channel. They have it up there too. So let's just go right into actually looking at the car. And um, I was a little surprised um, that they actually had, uh, as you can see, a really drive drivable version of the car. And not only is it drivable, they had four people in it, and everything in this car looked really finished. It's, it's really like there was nothing that was um, like halfway done, interior, exterior, everything worked. Even the touchscreen worked. Everything looked really like a production car. It was really a car you could go around and look at everything and say that's the way the car is going to look. So that was a really uh, surprise. They thought it, it just had like a mock-up there and we could just, you know, take pictures. But here you can see they had four people in there and uh, driving in it. Really amazing. And uh, they are two years out of production. Uh, two years out um, before they start producing the car. So 2019 is when they anticipate to produce the car. Um, one nice really thing is that when you see photos of the car, and I looked at the photos before I went to the presentation and I saw the uh, photos on the website and everything, it's a very different thing when you see the car in real life in front of you. You get a much better feel of how it actually looks, the size, the dimensions, and all of that. So 
and that's the reason why I went um, to that presentation to get actually get a real feel for it. And I'm really excited that they had an actual functioning, working, drivable car there. You could really test and sit in and all of that. At this point, everybody was still polite and not, you know, approach the car. They were still talking and showing some features. And in a second, you'll see everybody's crowding in and it's hard to get a shot at all. Um, but um, let's go back to design. I think it is a really nice design. I really like it. It's not trying to be too different, trying to be too much in the face. Um, obviously, they made some design cho choices that are make it stand out, but I think in a positive way. It doesn't feel like it's trying to be too fancy or too EV-like. I don't know. Some manufacturers, I think, they go a little bit too too much to make it different. I think the only thing, maybe the front, um, especially the... Uh, the LED lights that it's not one element, one big light, but it's several patches of of smaller lights, and each of them have um, micro lenses that direct their lights to the front. So um, I think it's a total of several thousand micro lenses. And by the way, the flickering here on the headlights it's something that happens when you shoot uh, an LED light with a camera. Sometimes it looks like it's flickering, but with the eye, it doesn't flicker at all. It's just a stable light. It looks like that's a little bit of a grill here. And the bottom is all shielded by a, a piece of plastic. And you can see there's two cameras here and some other sensors. So I think that's the forward facing um, sensors and cameras for the self-driving capabilities. Whether that's final or not, I'm not sure. Again, like it's coming out in 2019, that's two years from now. There might be a lot of other things um, in development going on that they might implement into the actual production of the car. As you can see, the roof is uh, entirely glass. It's two pieces, not one continuous piece, but two. But it's um, a really nice look. Um, oh, here's like a little front look. Um, I think the front looks great. Gigantic wheels. I'm not sure what size they are. Maybe two, 22 inch, I don't know. The door handles don't come out. They just um, barely move a little bit so to open it. A little bit of chrome, but not too much. I think it really like very, very nice balanced um, look. Whether uh, obviously it's always a, a matter of personal taste, what kind of design you know appeals to someone or not. But I think it, my 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 in my taste, this is a really nicely designed car. Love it. It's beautiful. Um, it looks high class. It looks high end without being too. Um, I don't know, just without being too much. Here's a little trying to get a little bit further away to get a better look of the, of the back of the car. I love the red line here. Um, very nice. Here's the driver's side interior. It's nothing too fancy. Uh, doesn't look very different from other cars. And here's a quick view at the back seats. Um, and you can see in a moment they actually recline a lot. Um, the front has a driver uh, side has three screens that the main bash dashboard and then two on the sides. And so here you can see that how much space there is in the back seat. So the, f the driver's seat wasn't um, pulled forward it was actually in a position where I could easily sit in there's a quick look at the interior again I think that's a vent and then here is a little control panel for certain things and you can adjust the seats with that control panel here but as I said there's plenty of space here you can see there's plenty of space in the for the rear the passenger seats and I'm a big guy I'm 6'4 oh, wow. and um, I could easily sit in the back and have plenty of leg, leg sorry leg room um, and again like the front the, the driver's seat wasn't pushed forward it was in a normal position where I could sit in so really they maximized the interior space of the car oh here you can see it has a almost like a recliner a little uh, rest for your legs support them a little bit and um, you can see here the guy has it all the way reclined. You can almost sleep in there. It's very comfortable. So let's have a look when it you actually sit in the car. As I said, there's two, th uh, th sorry, three screens on the dashboard. The left and right screen are actually touch screens. 
And then there is in the center, um, yeah, this one is a touch screen as well. And then this one is also a touch screen. Um, it's kind of like an iPad Pro size, I guess. Plenty of leg room here, very clean, very simple. And another thing that I noticed right away, unlike Tesla, where they pretty much um, got rid of every button around the car, they decided to have buttons for the most used controls, like climate controls, and obviously there's buttons on the, you know, the seats and and around the steering wheel, which makes sense because that's where you have your hands naturally, anyways. But also around the dashboard, they still have some buttons. And I talked to the guy that is. Uh, in charge of the whole interface uh, driver with a car and he said he fought for that actually that's and I think I agree with him that for, for certain functions it is actually better to have physical buttons just 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 having the feel of it and and muscle memory can always reach them and you can see that with or reach that and control that without having to look at it like a touch screen you always have to look at that it definitely makes you feel oh like it's open, right? yeah it's very nice. oh, that's cool. I'm trying to do the selfie camera with a little wider view and give you a little bit of a uh, better view of the inside. You can see that's that's where I feel like the uh, the name Air really uh, how it fits. It's a, it's it's got a very airy, open feel to it. The, the glass roof is goes all the way to the back. Here we can see it a little bit better here. Feels very open, very spacious, very airy. It's beautiful. I I feel really like not detached from the environment you know when you drive through a nice place you can really get the feel of it really beautiful interior feeling in the car <coughs> that's a little simulation of what their autopilot will do they call it co-pilot active uh, obviously the simulation the car wasn't actually running that was just a little test um screen that they had up the center screen here that looks like a giant iPad um, actually can be pushed into the dashboard so it completely disappears if you want to. I think that's a good choice. If you don't want it, it's gone. Again, a little view of the glass roof, really amazing. And totally reclining back seats. By the way, those seats are an option. You can also get the car with a bench seat for three people. Um, they only had this version right now here on, on display. so. Uh, and again, this one disappears if you want to. It probably is motorized and goes back into the dash and completely gone. And here are the prototypes that they actually use to test the car, to test drive um, all kinds of conditions. They are camouflaged. The paint is a uh, camouflage paint, so you can't really see the design of the car. Um, that's usually what they do with early oh, test models that ride. they don't want photos to show in the press and give away the design when it's not finished yet <coughs> so we could get in line here and get a little test ride um, they told us that these cars obviously don't have an interior you can see it uh, in a second when we're inside the car here that's just a bare bone chassis with with a screens attached and <laughs> you know the steering wheel is not that's not the steering wheel that's got the car is going to have and all of that so this is just uh to test all the components and everything it's not a design uh test car but in general the the battery and the motor and all of that those are the components they're, they're going to use and we got a good feel of how the car is on the road uh, even though we were not allowed to drive it ourselves it was actually a good way to get a feel of how the car would handle on the street and I have to say it feels really well connected to the road it's it's tight but not like uncomfortably tight like a like a hardcore race car that is where you feel like you're every little tiny little rock on the road you feel in your back it wasn't a case like that it was really it felt tight without without losing comfort it's kind of I found a really nice compromise in making it tight to the road but still comfortable the power was limited to what he said half power which means 500 horsepower um, which is about half of what they anticipate for the final version when he stepped on it it felt kind of similar to my model s which is an 85 a non p version um, maybe it was a little bit faster it's hard to tell um, so it definitely is a fast car and it has the potential to go even faster
It was a little bit noisy in the car, but it's just because there is no paneling and all of that. Unfortunately, the battery of my GoPro died right at the end of the street when he stepped on the brakes really hard. Really a high-end sports car. I try to get an outside shot of the car driving by, and you can see here there's a Tesla Model S right next to it. And you can see that the Lucid Air is a little bit smaller, it's not quite as long and I think it's maybe the same width but actually probably a little smaller. And then that's that's one point where I totally agree with the with the person doing, doing the presentation when they said they uh, maximize the interior space um, even though they have the exterior size of more of a, of a mid-size um, sedan. And I, I agree it's it's really amazing how much space they interior space they get out of the external dimension of the car it's it's really great um, and those are the favorite shots I found on the website that really to me show the design of the car really nice it's a nice clean side view that I couldn't get at the presentation there were just too many people about 300 people all trying to crowding the car uh, there wasn't a clear view to get that so I took those from the website again I like the front a lot it's really beautiful um, so overall, I'm, I really think that's a beautiful car, very nicely designed. It's, it's really well thought out and, and every detail you can tell. They, they thought about it and it, they designed it in a way that it makes sense. And, and it's really just like amazing to be inside the car and the glass roof and the feeling you get in the car and the space you have in the car. Really, really good. Um, they said the price they're aiming for around um, 80000 so that's similar to the Model S. Depending on the option, it can go from 65,000 to 160,000 or something like that. So I think very comparable to the Model S. Um, and yeah, I think it's a beautiful car. I can't wait to see it on the actual road. It's going to be coming out in 2019.